As Nigeria's Electoral Commission distributes permanent cards to voters around the country, the exercise has been riddled with uh, delays and allegations of underhand tactics by the Electoral Empire. Fessus Okoye of the Independent National Electoral Commission joins us this morning on The Breakfast to look at this and other issues. And Nigeria's largest city, Lagos, has been facing what some describe as a housing crisis for some years now. Now, how can the housing deficit in Lagos be reduced? Stay with us for a conversation on this. And in Of The Press, we'll take a look at the latest headlines on the front pages of today's national dailies. And we're back with the breakfast. It's a beautiful Thursday morning, reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels. You're welcome. We have a very, very fantastic lineup of uh, discussions for you this morning. And we implore you to sit back, relax, and have a fantastic time with us, of course, right here on The Breakfast. Once again, you're welcome. Well, as usual, we'll start with a look at what's been trending on social space across all the social media platforms. What has got Nigerians talking? We call it a top trending segment and thousands are still asking uh, the African Music Awards to disqualify Nigerian musical artist Brahimo over what they've termed his hate speech. Uh, of course, uh, on Tuesday, we brought you some uh, analysis and discussion of this in a top trending segment. Um, and the conversations are still ongoing. People are still talking about it. At, as of Tuesday, when we, we raised this in a top trending segment, uh, the petition on change.org uh, asking Afrima to disqualify Nigerian musical artist Brahimo uh, from its awards had garnered about 4,500 uh, uh, signatures as we speak we're hearing that uh, over 8,000 Nigerians or eight, over 8,000 people have signed that petition um, right now. And, of course, they want to prevent the man from winning uh, one of the eight Afrima Awards. So one of the awards are the eighth Afrima. That is the African, All African Music Awards. Um, he made some contentious comments about the Igbo uh, ethnic group in Nigeria. Uh, not just one, several. But... Uh, Brahimo began receiving fire, a lot of fire, after he expressed, probably expressed his support uh, for one of the presidential candidates, uh, that of the All Progressives Congress, uh, Shiwa Jibola Tinubu, and of course, um, he received a lot of fire, especially on Twitter. And like I said, um, maybe that got to him, you know, maybe that got to him, and he began to use the F word and those kind of slurs against uh, an ethnic group in the country, uh, this ethnic group, the Igbos, are largely perceived to be uh, in the majority uh, of those who support the Labour Party's presidential candidate, or in the majority of those who are not in support of the All Progressives Congress. Um, that's the perception. So it, it's a it's a quote political and you know uh, social. It has a political aspect to it as well as an ethnic aspect to it. Now, according to the petition. Um, Brimo, by not receiving the uh, Freema Award, uh, will send a clear message to him, that's a musician, uh, considering those uh, derogatory statements against the Igbo people in Nigeria. Now, a Nigerian named Charles Ogundele, who is not from the southeastern part of the country where uh, the Igbos are from, uh, they have their home there, uh, Charles Ogundele, Ogundele took it upon himself to start a petition against uh, Brahimo, who is an alternative musician. Um, so that's what we have as we speak. Um, this is what the petition says. Quote, Brahimo recently put up a series of hateful messages on Twitter toward the Igbo tribe of Nigeria, going uh, as far as retweeting a tweet which said that all Igbos are senseless. Uh, some Nigerians signed a petition to prevent the musician from receiving the award after Brahimo was nominated for the Songwriter of the Year um, last year. In one of his tweets, he wrote F uh, Omo Igbo, which translates F the Igbo people. His actions, the petition continues, uh, one which spark, uh, once which sparked disunity, hatred, and multicultural, in the multicultural nation that Nigeria is. It, the petition says, uh, preventing him from winning the All-Africa 
a music award will send a strong message to him and people like him that he can't get away with such a blatant ethnic bigotry, end of quote. So that's um, what you have there. Some uh, Nigerian celebrities have been coming out to uh, tell uh, um, you know, Brian Moore to apologize. <coughs> Excuse me. One of such is uh, on a personality, media personality, uh, Daddy Freeze, uh, formerly of Cool FM and Nigeria Info, who also um, you know, uh, asked Brian Moore to apologize. Uh, Paul Okoye of P-Square fame, publicly called Rude Boy, also had some things to say about um, Brimo and really went hard on him. Without mentioning his name, uh, we must uh, point out. Some people on Twitter have been asking for Brimo to stop behaving like a child, you know, um, <coughs> excuse me, and the uh, conversation is still ongoing. If you check out his timeline, he's been going hard, you know, he's been going hard and refusing to uh, relent. Um, so, we can safely say that uh, the genesis of this is his support for Bola Ahmed Tinubu publicly. Now, like I said uh, on Tuesday, a primo like like Peter of P Square, like Paul of P Square, and all the musicians who are supporting one presidential candidate or the other, Brimo equally has a right to support a presidential candidate that he likes. <laughs> it's, his, it's his right. Nobody can take that away from him. But Brimo, in exercising his right, need not allow the criticism, justified or unjustified, from people on social media uh, to get to him. It's really a toxic space. And as a public figure, you know, certain things should not be heard from your mouth you know, or seen on your timeline. Uh, it's, it's, it's not allowed. I don't know if Brimo is aware that um, what he's doing is actually wrong. It's against the law. Is against the law. I mean, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. The current, uh, uh, some of the current uh, cyber crime laws that uh, have been put in place by the federal government do not allow hate speech. You have hate speech laws as well. You know, uh, international conventions on hate speech, you know, international conventions that promote um, healthy conversations and are against uh, ethnic, ethnically laced uh, speeches are all there. Uh, I don't know if Brian Moore is aware that he's breaking some of these international conventions and norms. These are international norms. Or I do not know if he's aware. You know, we know that sometimes musicians uh, do certain things to trend, you know, certain things to be accepted by people. But uh, this is not one of them. You know, you can have a, a sex scandal. You can release, you know, a tape. You can have a, a beef, like they call it, with your colleague. <coughs> All those things are safe things to do. When it comes to attacking uh, a tribe or uh, an ethnic group in the country, or attacking people based on where they come from and insulting an entire tribe, uh, I do not think that uh, is the right thing to do to trend. I'm not saying I'm sure Brahmo is trying to trend, uh, but you know what? Some of those who are attacking him are not from the Southeast. Um, some of those who are against his his presidential candidate are not from the South. They're from the Southwest, where he comes from, you know. Uh, so it, it's important for him to understand that uh, it's not about Igbo or no Igbo, all right? Some people who are from his part of the country, the Yoruba ethnic group, are in support of the candidates that, you know, probably he's looking at as being the one who can challenge um, his own presidential candidate, be it Peter B or Atiku Abubakar. <coughs> Excuse me. Some people who are from the Yoruba ethnic uh, group who dominate the southwestern part of the country, where Bola Ametin, the APC presidential candidate, is from, um, some Yorubas are not in support of uh, Bola Tinubu and the APC. So I think it goes beyond uh, an ethnic thing. And um, gone are the days when we used to see musicians in the country um, being the ones who unify Nigeria, you know, being the ones who promote unity, you know, for instance, the legendary uh, Sonny Okosos, who sang uh, Which Way Nigeria, Which Way Nigeria, you know, these are songs that made you think about the country and think about consciousness, you know, or is it the legendary Oye Kawen who sang One Love, Keep Us Together, all right, you know, or is it, um, 
uh, what do you call it, uh, Raskimono, all right, who sang Under Pressure. Under Pressure, Nigeria, Under Pressure. These are conscious songs, conscious songs. I know Brimo has some conscious songs, you know. He has some conscious, you look at his music, he has songs, conscious songs, songs about the country, you know. He even sang a song about, you know, HIV and AIDS and all those kind of things. He has some conscious songs. But, you know, gone are the days when musicians were, see, now they climb the campaign stage and they are after money, all right? I mean, we can look at uh, Majek Fashek, look at the songs he sang, you know, about the state of the country, the state of Africa. I mean, look at Bob Marley, look at uh, Lucky Dube. Um, so I don't know if we can say that Nigerian musicians no longer sing consciously, um, act as a conscience of the nation. Should I go on? What about the legendary Baba Fela and Nicolak Pokuti? Whom Brimo, I'm sure, idolizes because you look at the style, they're the same. Now, will Fela be proud of Brimo if Fela were to come today and what he's doing? I think musicians need to have a rethink on their method because money isn't everything. I'm not saying Brimo is looking for money, but I'm saying that, you know, sometimes when they go out of their way to support a candidate, maybe, you know, uh, perform on the stage and campaign for him and get paid, it's their, it's their job, is their right. Sometimes they also need to realize that Nigerians look up to them, and they may be the ones to be able to speak truth to power. Um, may God help us, and I will leave that at that. Let's go to another one. This is a bizarre one, and uh, something that is like nothing you've heard before, or there are a few things you've heard that are like this ever before in your life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy upon us. Uh, pastor fakes own kidnap, collects 600,000 naira ransom from members. Pastor, pastor, fakes own kidnap, collects 600,000 naira from ra ransom from members. I think that Raskimoto song really goes into this, this situation under pressure. Wow. I mean, who could have thought? One day you go to bed thinking you've seen it all in this country. When you wake up, you see another one that proves to you that we have not even started. <laughs> so this happened in Joss Plateau State. Um, a pastor based in Joss Plateau State uh, in north, north central Nigeria or in central Nigeria, Al Barka Beatrice is his name. Um, he has been arrested by operatives of the Plateau State police command of the Nigeria police force in Plateau State, rather, uh, for staging his own kidnap and demanding ransom from members of his congregation. <coughs> Excuse me. According to the police public relations officer in, in uh, Plateau State, uh, he said yesterday that the pastor was arrested along his, with his collaborators following intelligence reports after church members paid 600,000 naira ransom to secure the cleric statement is what he's saying. Um, this is uh, really, really, really bizarre. Now, the statement from the police read, in part, the just the Plateau State Police Command has again uncovered the nefarious act of one pastor, Albarka Beatrice Sukuya, male of Genta Apata in Joss, who on several occasions staged his kidnap with his courts and received um, ransom from sympathizing members of the congregation. Sickle to his spurious kidnaps, the police statement said, of 14th November 2022 and 30th November 2022, where the sum of 400,000 naira and 200,000 naira were respectively paid by his sympathizers as ransom for his release. The incidents triggered suspicion. Okay. Um, the police says through incredible, or credible rather, intelligence, the clergyman was invited by the DPO of Nasarawa Gong police station uh, and investigation commenced immediately it says in the course of the investigation it was established that the suspect has been conspiring with his gang to stage his kidnap and fraudulently collect ransom oh my oh my it's um it's quite a, a, a bizarre you know <laughs> There's a, another story I remember if you, we could collect from Bielsa State, uh, where one guy who normally goes on Instagram to give motivational messages, um, inspirational messages, was arrested 
And what the police found out and exposed was that he had been involved in kidnapping in Bayelsa State. You see, some of the things we see in our society these days don't get carried away. I tell people, don't get moved. I tell people, don't get, don't get impressed. Don't get worried. Be co content with your, or be, yeah, with your life, you know. Be content with your life and pray for God to help you get better. But don't look at the other man and say, ah, this guy is doing well. I must, I must catch up. No, 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 no. Because some of the things we see, you don't know where it's coming from. Um, people are doing all sorts of things in the name of God, you know, and uh, we all need to be careful. Uh, some of the things that we hear, I mean, I'm a Christian, uh, we hear from the pulpit <laughs> these days, these days, it gives a lot of worry for me. Why? Because I read my Bible, all right? Um, a lot of people these days, you know, can go to church, all sorts of churches, they don't read their Bibles, so they don't know, you know? Someone just says, praise the Lord, and then you jump. But the interesting thing is all these things shouldn't be a surprise because even Jesus himself said in Scripture that in the last days many will come in my name. All right? False prophets will arise. Many. He says many. Which means that majority of those who are out there saying they're pastors and prophets and all that are fake. Majority. Because Jesus said many. He didn't say few. He said what? Many. So... A lot of people are being deceived. A lot of people are being, you know, uh, led astray, you know. And most times it's because we, of what we want to hear. We don't want to hear the truth. People are not ready to listen to those who tell them to stop stealing, to stop corruption, to stop cheating, to stop lying, to love their neighbor, all right? And, and, and to work hard, to work hard. They want to hear that. They want to hear the one who would just tell them all the beautiful things that they want to hear. Okay? But at the end of the day, the Bible tells us that, um, that uh, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all other things shall be added to you. Okay? Therefore, it means that if you get a visa, your pastor prays for you, get a visa and get a miracle, and you travel to America, and you don't have righteousness, you are not saved. It's not going anywhere, you know. So we have lots of lot of people parading themselves as uh, pastors and bishops and prophets, apostles, and most of these people are fake, fake. I mean, someone stands up to them. I'm a Christian, all right. Don't don't get it twisted. But I read my Bible, you know. Um, I don't read it as much as I should, okay, because I need to read more. Than I, but I at least I know my Bible. Yeah, I read all. I read. But I think I should be reading more than I'm reading right now. And, you know, but people don't read the scripture to know. And, and, and the Bible says that you will know them by their fruit. Okay, so if someone is telling you be doing A, B, C, D, E, what kind of fruit is a person, you know, exhibiting? If you're meant to be a pastor, how should a pastor be? How should a prophet be? How should he live his life? You know, and, and some of these pastors today are doing questionable things, questionable things. They're showing you the fruit in your, before your eyes, but you can't even tell because you don't know that the scripture says a pastor should not do A, B, C, D, E. So these are the issues. It's um, unfortunate that, uh, you know, someone who's parading as a pastor will stand up and go and kidnap himself, right? And then tell the members to pay just for what he can gain. Anyway, that's where we are today. Um, I don't know if government can do anything to help because they're also a problem to society. You know, people are being, are being swindled by people in the name of God. And it's, it's sad to see. It's sad to see. All right, that's the end of my sermon, all right? Um, I think I'll put the offering bowl so you guys can give me some, some offering. Let's take the last one. Uh, federal government to hire Nigerian doctors and nurses and nurses abroad. Um, I mean, like I said, every day is a new drama. Um, well, the federal government of Nigeria is saying that, uh, you know, they'll tr they try to address the brain drain in the health sector. If you've seen the statistics, you realize that a uh, significant amount of nurses and doctors have left Nigeria. All right, Nigerian trained nurses and doctors, health workers, have left the country to go seek greener pasture abroad. Now, even those who haven't started working yet, finished their training, have left to go abroad to get their final papers, <coughs> excuse me, so that they can start working. I know it's several, I know several. United States, Canada, the Middle East, you know, um, UK, 
I know in a lot of them. But um, in a bid to address brain drain in the health sector, the Nigerian Minister of, Minister of Health uh, has disclosed the federal government is making a move to engage Nigerian doctors abroad um, and Nigerian nurses abroad, those who left the country, who jackpot, all right, and connect them with the teaching hospitals in the country. Now, some people have said, oh, laughing at this, that, you know, they've left the country. What makes you think they want to be connected with the country again? But some, so in some other way, if you look at this, maybe this could be a creative way of um, helping to address uh, the gap, all right, the gap in the health sector. Um, the minister on Tuesday was at the uh, 17th edition of the President Mount Buhari Administration's scorecard series uh, in Abuja. And now he complained that experienced doctors uh, were leaving the country. He also said a lot of doctors and nurses felt they were not properly rewarded for the work that they were doing. And he explained the federal government was trying to address the issue by improving the condition of services of medical personnel. You know, when, when you say you're trying to improve by improving, it means you have not, you're not yet done it fully. You are just in the process of doing it, which is not what we want to hear. When you do it, tell us you've done it. Don't forget, resident doctors are already getting set for a strike. Eh? Well, he says Nigeria is not the only country affected by the high mobility of health workers. That's what he calls it. <coughs> Excuse me, high mobility of health workers. Um, so anyway, uh, is this something that the Minister of Health is just saying because he has to face the press and give a scorecard? Or is this something that they really want to do? Because if you check the archives, you realize and you find out that the uh, Minister of Labor and Employment, who himself is a medical doctor, senator, doctor, former governor, uh, Chris Singigi, he is on record as saying to the press that, I mean, we have more than enough doctors in this country and nurses, you know, to replace those who are leaving. We don't have a problem that they can go. The Nigeria can even, uh, you know, um, can even share with the rest of the world. So if the Minister of Labor and Employment is saying Nigeria doesn't have a problem, you know, as many doctors as want to leave can go, there are more to replace them, then what is the Minister of Health saying? I think uh, the Minister of Health and his colleague, who is the Minister of Labor and Employment, need to sit down in one of the offices in Asurok Villa and have a conversation as to what the real situation is so that they can, they can tell us. Um, addressing the issues in the health sector go beyond rhetoric, all right? They go beyond just talking. Um, they go beyond, we intend to, we plan to, we will, we are, no, 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 no. People need to see concrete action, all right? Backed by a strong political will, backed by vision. You know, the issues sounding the health sector are not just uh, about remuneration, about pay, about welfare. They're also about facilities. Some of these doctors, a lot of them are leaving because they're tired of working in such an environment. They're tired of working in such an environment where, um, <clears throat> you know, you don't have the facilities. Go to the public hospitals in the country today, teaching hospitals. I mean, I saw, total I saw, all right? Total I saw. There's a breakdown of uh, the, the, what do you call it again? The health insurance service or system in the country, the program. It's dead, all right? A lot of them are also leaving because of insecurity. Some are leaving because of the economy, you know. So it goes beyond just, you know, giving a speech, really. Um, that's all we'll see. We'll leave it at that for now. That's uh, the size of our top trending segment. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have a look at what the papers have for us. Stay with us.